All right, so somebody asked in YouTube, actually, uh, let's go back and see. We came for a question from Alex Kumar. What do you think of Micro K8S micro K versus Minikube? Uh, this is from, this is coming on a video where actually Palm might be better than Docker. Uh, and to give you some background on this, the, the, I started thinking about using Palm because uh, Docker desktops are charging and a lot of people are looking for alternatives. That was when I found out that Minikube uh, uh, runs on everything. It runs on... You know, out of the box, you can just install it on anything, um, Mac, Windows, or whatever, and you know, with without any other dependencies. Um, and Podman actually, this summarizes the other video. Podman has some systemd awareness that actually you can install systemd onto containers that are using Podman. You can't do that with Docker, and without some extra magic, you got to mount, uh, you know, procfs, cgroups, and stuff. And but this question is about microcates versus minikubes. So microcates is is this this thing that came out of um, like I think it's a canonical. And the the long story short, microcates is developed it's it's a focus on on minimal Kubernetes installations that are really small and edge. So however there are a lot of people that use microcates for other for other purposes internally and locally to, to test their, their stuff because they want a true Kubernetes installation. That's not it. But the problem is, is it's not true. So so the first thing I have to say about it is that micro uh, micro micro Kubernetes uh, is not Kubernetes. And, you know, people might argue with me about that, but it's not. It's not. And you, know, you can also say that Minikube is also not Kubernetes, right? <laughs> they're, they're not. They're they're they fulfill the Kubernetes standards to some degree. I think they're still officially certified, you know, by the CNCF to say, hey, yeah, we are. But they're really not Kubernetes. And so uh, so that's the first thing to remember is that neither of them are real Kubernetes, but they're, they are ways to get Kubernetes locally and they have different targets. So micro Kubernetes is, is primarily uh, for real uh, deployments uh, on edge devices. That's its primary purpose. So, you know, and that's not what I want, right? Minikube uh, is primarily uh, for testing local uh, Kubernetes stuff. That's its, its main purpose, education and testing. Microcase was never made for that purpose. And therefore, it's missing some things that you might want to use and stuff. So, like one of the things, for example, is that Minikube, uh, Minikube automatically um, forwards uh, uh, load balancer and other cluster things that make it really nice. So, you don't, you know, people don't know this about Kubernetes, but Kubernetes doesn't come with an ingress and stuff like that. And you can get to it if you know the IP, but if you put it all inside of a virtual network, it gets hard to get to. It's one of the com complaints I have against Kind versus Minikube is that Minikube will actually give you the IP and you can actually connect straight to it. And, and it will take care of anything that's listed as a service or a load balancer or, or whatever. And anything that's listed can then now then be connected to. And that makes it really, really convenient when you're just working on something locally where you didn't want to have to set that up. Uh, but maybe you wanted to set it up. Maybe you don't like that it does that magic for you because you want to learn about how to do that magic yourself. Uh, that might be a time for you to look at micro Kubernetes. Um, but in my opinion, the best possible way uh, so my opinion is the best way to learn is on uh, is on actual hardware, and and this is something I I keep trying to get around, but it just it's just actual hardware is the best, and you know there's lots of things you can do for the actual hardware. Uh, you can do you know I have a bunch of Mac Minis uh, left over uh, left over. You know, I have a bunch of MSI Tridents, which have GPUs in them that are left like left over. Uh, you know, you can use Raspberry Pis. I got something like forty to sixty Raspberry Pis left over. You know, because these are actual Linux systems. These are the kind of things that you would have to support in the wild. Um, you know, and and so I I think. 
it's taking me a long time to do it, but, but that's better for education because I've, I'm learning all of it. I'm not just learning how to, you know, run QBDM. I'm learning how to start up the system, what operating systems to do. Um, you know, so, you know, you learn, you learn infrastructure, uh, the operations and setup, uh, as well. And I think that those are things that get ignored in the Kubernetes training space. People don't learn that stuff. So it's another reason that I don't just want to have Raspberry Pis because I want to run, you know, the primary Linux operating systems in the cloud, which are uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat, and Suzy. Uh, you can like the other distros, that's fine if you want to, but they're not prevalent in the enterprise cloud. So you need to learn those and Raspberry Pis are not going to be enough. Because you're not going to learn APT with a Raspberry Pi. You can. You can. There's versions of, of Ubuntu that will run a Raspberry Pi, but that's one step away from the real deal. And so by saying that you're, you know, running on real things, I would, you can find, uh, you know, look for old uh, hardware uh, at your relatives. <laughs> you can find old hardware that will run Kubernetes just amazingly and put that in your cluster Um and you can almost always find, just like you can find for old Linux machines, right? Uh, why is why is Raspberry Pi one step away from the real thing? Because it's not real. It's not real Red Hat. It's not. It, some of the device drivers and stuff are going to be different, uh, if you can even get it. I mean, last I checked, Canonical was no longer supporting their version of Ubuntu on Raspberry Pi. Uh, but that was a long time ago. I could be wrong, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Um... If you install a bunch on a Pi, it's, no, it's not. It's absolutely not. I wish it were. I wish it were. Because, Dash, let me give you a good example of that. Okay, so it's not. Because because the packages that are available for Raspberry Pi, which is running on ARM, are different than the packages that are available for x86. Uh, you know, they're, they're not AMD64 stuff. So step the first reason that Raspberry Pi leaves you hanging is because it doesn't give you all the packages that you might eventually want to run on that system. So let's say that you encounter um, uh, most containers are not written for ARM, right? So the, your, your, the whole point of having a Kubernetes cluster here is to have something that you can run any container on. Well, the number of containers that support x86 is very much greater than the number that run on ARM. That's changing. That's changing really fast, but you cannot run an ARM container on an x86 machine and vice versa. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's a new M1 Max. I think I need some of the x86 stuff still. Right, right. And and that's, so this is this is an issue. So I've actually hit this issue. I, I tried to run, I have all these Raspberry Pis, right? I tried to put uh, Ubuntu on my Raspberry Pis, and I found out really quickly that some of the basic, uh, I can't remember which ones, but some of the, some of the basic packages that I installed didn't have any presence in the, I couldn't apt install them. It was just a pain in the ass. There wasn't one there. I'd have to go download it and do that kind of thing, uh, for the pre-install of their repo. I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. I'm not, I'm not against Raspberry Pi, particularly myself. I just found it to be a problem. Uh, yeah, you might have had to com compile your own. And and if you're into compiling your own for Raspberry Pi, which I probably will do as well, um, that's fine. My personal uh, preference for the Raspberry Pis is going to be running Talos and Sidero, Talos slash Sidero on there and run, uh, which fully supports netbooting from Raspberry Pi. But but I but if you if you want it to feel like work, and, there, and then when I want to frustrate myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you if you if you truly do want to, um, thank you for the links, Ryuk. I pretty appreciate that, Ryuk. Yeah, did they really? Oh my God, I'm gonna have to go look that up now. Thank you for ruining my view of the naive universe. I need that. That's why I have you, you friends here. So I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. This is so whether or not micro Kubernetes versus mini cube. Ultimately, it comes down to what kind of environment what what do you want to simulate right and first of all if you're there's also kind in there nobody's talking about kind we should probably mention it um so kind kind is by the way do we have space kind i don't think we have enough we're not going to do kind versus these so we'll talk about kind in another video uh yeah so 
Yeah, multi-stage Docker building is a really important thing, and that's definitely a cool thing to do. But that's I don't want to learn that during my my my, my Kubernetes installs. <laughs> so, uh, so so let's just say this: Microcates is specifically designed for edge computing environments, and for that it really shines. That means if you're going to make a robot and you want to run Kubernetes on the robot and have all the sensors be individual, you know, nodes or whatever, or you want to do you know, anything on the edge, micro Kubernetes is a great thing to use for that. And it has been used by some people for, for educational purposes, but the overwhelming suggestion when it comes to learning uh, is Minikube. It's supported by this, the Cloud Native Foundation officially. Uh, that's officially the thing they have you do for the tutorials. Um, and, and it's now kind of running neck and neck versus kind, uh, which runs entirely in Docker and simulates nodes by creating containers that pretend to be machines. They're not really machines. Uh, Minikube, by the way, was influenced so much by that, that they now do that by default as well, if you have Docker installed. So if you want the easiest, uh, I, I personally think having Docker installed and then using kind or Minikube is the way to go about learning. Uh, but even better than that, as I've said, the best way to learn is on actual hardware, uh, which may take you a lot longer to set up. I still haven't got mine set up. I'm still working on it. It's going to go right here. I'm still cleaning my room. Um, but I'm going to put it over here because it, even if I would rather run on on the devices that, I, that I'm using in production uh, every day um, to get a more... You know, because because the, the problems that we hit every day are stuff, you know, ARP storms, the way that things related to the devices themselves. How is the network working here? How is, you know, it's infrastructure problems. It's not just Kubernetes problems. So so by modeling the environment as close as possible, I think I think you'll I think you'll win out better on that. So uh, that's my take on that. We'll end that video right there. Let me know in the comments. I'm trying to answer comments more these days. So let me know.